All right, we're looking at uh, section 2.1, and this is where c the calculus really begins in the course, um, because we're going to be learning the limit process, and that's what separates uh, calculus from algebra. Before we get started, we're going to review some um, factoring, though, because it'll be useful for this section. So um, some of the special factoring rules are here. We have the difference of two squares and the difference in sum of two cubes. Now note that the sum and difference of two cube formulas, those are just ones that you memorize. And um, you'll find what the A and B are and just plug them into a formula just like you would with like say the quadratic formula. <coughs> so here are some examples of each one. x squared minus 4 factors to x plus 2, x minus 2 x squared plus 6x plus 5 is x plus 5 times x plus 1. And here's an example of a difference of two cubes where in this case the a is x and b is the cube root of 8 which is 2. And then you're just plugging those a and b's into the formula to get x minus 2 times x, pu x squared plus 2x plus 4. Uh, so let's try some ourselves. We have x squared minus 25 that's going to be x plus 5 and x minus 5. x squared minus 6x plus 9 factors to be x minus 3 all squared. <coughs> so to check that, take the first term, square it back, you get x squared, so that works. Uh, if I square a negative 3, I get 9, and then if you multiply the, the, the two um, terms here, x and negative 3 together, you get negative 3x, double it, it's negative 6x, so we know that it checks. But we could also FOIL it out because x minus 3 squared is x minus 3 times x minus 3. Now B, um, well this should be C. C um, is a little bit different because our A term is a 2 instead of a 1. So for these I recommend using the box method or any method that you like to factor trinomials. Now we're going to put the first term in the top left um, diagonal and the last term negative 21. Oh, I wasn't quick enough. Negative 21 is going to go in the bottom right. And um, if we multiply tw negative 21 and 2 we get negative 42. So we need the factors of negative 42 that add up to negative 1, which is the middle term. So that would be negative 7 and 6, because if you add those together, you get negative 1. So on the other two diagonals, and it doesn't matter which way you do it, uh, we're going to put a 6x and a negative 7x. Because negative 7x plus 6x is negative x. Um, now we're going to factor out the GCF of the top row, and that's going to be 2x. And what's left we put on top, so if we take out a 2x, we're left with x, and we're left with 3. On the bottom row, we can factor out a negative 7. And if I multiply the, t um, the x and the 3 times the negative 7, make sure it works out. So x times negative 7 is negative 7x, and 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. So our factors are 2x minus 7 and the x plus 3. So the factors are what you have, what you pull out of the box. For d, we determine what the a and the b are. Um, a is the cube root of the first term, so a here is x and b is the cube root of 64, or negative 64, which is 4, but you don't really need to worry about the negative, um, just note that you need to use the um, a squared, or a cubed minus b cubed formula, use the subtraction one. So if we plug it in the formula, we get x minus 4 times x squared plus 4x, and then 4 squared is 16, so plus 16. So no method there, it's just a matter of um, plugging and chugging the values. All right, 2.1. So we're going to learn about the limit. And um, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. That's how we say this notation here. So 
LIM, of course, is short for limit. And, this, and the little X arrow C is saying as X approaches C, or X gets close to C, of F of X, so some function. Uh, and then that value is approaching, so we have an arrow here, is getting close to L. So the arrow means approaches or gets very close to. Now f of c is a single number that describes a behavior value at f of x, um, of f of x at, at a point x equals c. So that's a little different than the limit. The limit, we're not concerned with the actual function value at that point. We just want to know what happens um, to the function as we get close to c. Near, but not at the point x equals c. Um, we have left and right hand limits, so we can look at limits just coming from the right of a value or from the left. And to note that we're coming from the left, we put a little um, negative in, it's like a negative exponent on the C. And to note we're coming from the right, we put a little positive sign. Now the left and the right hand limits have to match up in order for the limit itself to exist at that point. But sometimes we only need to know what's happening from the left or from the right. So let's look at an example to try to put some of this together. So the first one, we're asked to find the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x. Now f of x is this function that's been graphed up here for you. So we're looking at the, the value as x approaches 3. So I'm going to circle 3. This is the value that we're, we're trying to get close to. Now this is a piecewise function, it's kind of all over the place, but if I find the, the graph on the right side of 3, it's going to be this, this curve right here that I also have a red pen so it might be hard to see. So if I follow that coming in from the right and getting close to 3, the value of y that I match up with is 2. So this limit is 2. Now the actual value isn't 2, uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but the limit as we get close to 3 from the right on the graph is 2. Alright, so let me clear that out. Now we want to look at coming from the left. So on the left I'm going to use the other curve, I'm going to use this curve. So I'm coming in from the left, I'm getting close to 3, and the y value I'm getting close to is negative 1. So the left hand limit is negative 1. Now since these two values do not match up, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x does not exist. Now the actual function value at 3, um, that does exist. f of 3 is this solid dot right here, which is 1. All right, now let's concentrate on 2, the x value 2. So we circle 2, and as we get close to 2 coming from the left, um, so we're following this curve, we're getting closer and closer to 2, I see that the y value that I get close to is 1. And if I come in from the right, so that's the other side of the curve, it's the same thing, I'm getting close to 1 again. So the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x is 1. Because the right and the left are both the same and they're 1. Now f of 2 is not 1, f of 2 is 2, it's the solid dot right up here. So the limit and the function value are not the same. And that's okay, they don't have to be. They have to be for continuous functions, which we'll, we'll talk about later, but just in general, um, just because your function and your limit don't match up doesn't mean you've made a mistake. Let's look at another example. It's a similar type of graph, and uh, first of all, we're trying to find the limit as x approaches 1. So we still want to do what we did in the first example. We want to look from the left or from the right and uh, make sure they're the same. So from the left, I'm coming along on the left side, getting close to 1, and I see that my value is 1. 
if I come from the right, it's the same thing. Whether I come from the left or the right, as I get close to one, um, the x value one, I'm also getting close to the y value one. All right, let's look at two, limit as we get close to two. Coming from the left, or the right rather, I'm getting close to two. But if I come from the left, I get close to one. So this one doesn't exist. They don't match up. Uh, the limit as x approaches three. There we go. Um, so coming from the left, it looks like the value I get is for y is two. And if I come from the right, getting close and close to three, uh, also two. So that one does exist and it's two. And the last one we're going to look at is four. Here's four. We come from the left, following the graph, getting close to four, or from the right, the same value is zero. So those match up and it's zero. So that's graphically how we look at limits, but we can also look at limits algebraically. So the first thing to try when you're asked to find the limit algebraically is just plugging the value into the function. So if I plug six in here, I get six squared plus four times six minus three. It's 36 plus 24 minus three. And that would be a 57. So there's nothing, no problem there. Just plug it in, get 57. Here, we try plugging it in again. Uh, it's gonna be the square root of zero plus four, which is the square root of four, which is two. All right. Now where we have a um, fraction or a rational function is where we might run into trouble. If I try plugging two into this one, um, I get two minus two on top, and I get two minus two times two plus four on the bottom, I end up getting zero over zero. Now, that's called the indeterminate, and for limits, this doesn't really tell me anything other than I need to try something else. So I'm going to get rid of that. Um, there is a rule with limits that I can simplify this rational expression first and my answer for the simplified version is going to be just as good as, as anything else. So I cross those out, I get a one on top. Now when I plug in two, I get one over two plus four, which is one six. And there's my limit. And we're allowed to do that. Um, we run into the same problem with D. So let me factor it. So it's the limit as X approaches negative three of X plus three over x plus 3 times x plus 4. So the x plus 3's we'll get rid of and um, we'll end up with the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 1 over x plus 4. So if I plug in the negative 3 now, I get 1 over negative 3 plus 4, which is just 1. With E, this is going to be, we can see, you know, the x squared minus 25, we factored earlier, it's x plus 5, x minus 5. So this is going to be the same as the limit as x approaches 5 of 1 over x minus 5. And if I plug 5 in, in the simplified version, I still get 1 over 0. So that doesn't help us with that part. So this one, the limit um, doesn't exist. If we look at the graph for this one as we get close to five, uh, one side um, we're shooting way up to positive infinity and the other going way down to negative infinity. 
um, with this asymptote here at x equals 5. So this limit doesn't exist. Because even if we look at left and right hand limit, those are not even doing the same thing. All right, the last one uh, factored, we would have x plus 4 times x minus 4 all over x plus 3 and x plus 2. Now nothing is canceling out and if I plug in negative 3, um, so I'm going to get 9 minus 16 on top and I'm going to get 9 minus 15 plus 6 on the bottom. Um, so let's hope that this works out. We get a negative 7 over uh, negative 7 plus 6, I believe. So 9 minus 15 plus 6. Oh, we get a 0 on the bottom again. Um, so in this case, uh, we can't factor and simplify it. Um, so we'll look at it on the graphing calculator. Alright, so y equals, I'm going to clear out everything I have here, and uh, I'm going to put parentheses x squared minus 16 um, divided by x squared plus 5x Um, plus 6. And graph it. Alright, I must have some kind of weird zoom thing. Um, so we're looking at the limit as x equals negative 3, and I can't really see what's going on, so I'm going to change my window. Um, yeah, I, I need to look see further down on my y min. So if I want to look further down on, on my y, I need to change it from negative 10 to, I don't know, negative 50. And I don't really need to see all the way up to 600. Um, so I'm going to just change that to 50. And I should change my y scale to maybe uh, 1. And let's see what that looks like. We might have to change it again. Alright, that's much better. Um, but we really don't need to be all the way on 50 either. So I'm going to put negative 20 here and positive 10. It'll just make our graph look a little bit better. Alright, so we're looking at the limit um, as we get close to negative 3. Uh, so we can see if we look at the left of it, coming from the left, uh, it looks like we're approaching negative infinity, and the same if we're approaching uh, from the right. So this looks like it's going, the limit is going to um, negative infinity. So it's negative infinity, but for all intents and purposes, that means that it doesn't exist. In order for the limit to exist, it has to be an actual real number. And, and infinity and negative infinity aren't real numbers. Um, not to say that we don't still discuss it. We can still say, okay, what happens to this function as we approach negative 3? Oh, it's approaching negative infinity. That's still a good way to, it, it describes it more than just saying it doesn't exist. All right, continuity. Um, once you have a good understanding of limits, then continuity follows pretty well from there. So for a function to be continuous um, at a certain value, then um, what has to happen is the limit equals the function at that value. So remember before we talked about, well, it doesn't matter if the limit and the function value match up. Um, and it doesn't unless you're being asked if it's continuous or not. So we can, and another way to think of continuity is if you're following a graph and you have to pick up your pencil, like I do right here, I have to go down to two and then back up to finish it and then back down and I have a hole here. So every time there's a hole or a gap and I have to pick up my pencil, um, it's not continuous. So we can see that at two, it's not continuous. At three, it's not continuous. And at four, it's not continuous. 
but each one has a, a special name for their discont discontinuity. Um, so when there's a hole, like at 2 and 4, uh, we call that a removable discontinuity. So it's just one little hole, and um, I'm not sure why it's called removable. I guess just because if you filled in the hole, then it would be continuous. And then at 3, we have a jump discontinuity, because it's actually jumping from one value to another. Um, so those are the different types. And this last example, um, we're going to talk about where, the dis where there are discontinuities and it, um, what kind they are. Um, so in the first one, we have a, it's discontinuous at um, 1 because there's a hole. And at 3, um, that's not even, that's, uh, we don't have a special name for that, but it's definitely discontinuous because on one end it's going shooting up to infinity on one side and then on the other, uh, you know, there's just a, a value there. Um, so the limit is not going to exist at 3. So there's no way that it can be continuous. Um, and at 4 we also have uh, it's discontinuous. So there are three things to check um, to make sure a function is continuous. So the, the function value has to exist. Um, so at x equals 1, the function value doesn't exist, okay? Now the limit has to exist at 3, that one gets, it fails at 3. And then the third thing is the limit and the function value have to be equal. So at 4, it violates that rule because the, the limit exists, or actually the limit doesn't exist, um, at, at 4, and but the function value does. But since the limit doesn't exist, there's no way that it can equal the function value. Um, Alright, the second one here, what, at what points is the function shown discontinuous? So we have a removable discontinuity at, uh, looks like it's about zero. It's not exactly zero, but we'll just round. And we have a jump discontinuity at two. And that's all we have for discontinuities.